blue engine was getting old. His bearings were worn and he clanked as he puffed along. He was taking 20 empty cattle trucks to a market town. The sun shone, the birds sang, and some cows grazed in a field by the line. Come on, come on, come on, puffed Edward. Oh, 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 screamed the trucks. Edward puffed and clanked. The trucks rattled and screamed. The cows were not used to trains. The noise and smoke disturbed them. They twitched up their tails and ran. They galloped across the field, broke through the fence, and charged the train between the 13th and 14th trucks. The coupling broke, and the last seven trucks left the rails. They were not damaged, and stayed upright. They ran for a short way along the sleepers before stopping. Edward felt a jerk, but didn't take much notice. He was used to trucks. Bother those trucks, he thought. Why can't they come quietly? He ran on to the next station before either he or his driver realised what had happened. When Gordon and Henry heard about the accident, they laughed and laughed. Fancy allowing cows to break his train. They wouldn't dare do that to us. We'd show them, they boasted. Edward pretended not to mind, but Toby was cross. You couldn't help it, Edward, he said. They've never met cows. I have, and I know the trouble they are. Some days later, Gordon rushed through Edward's station. Poop, poop, he whistled. Mind the cows. Ha, 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 he chortled, panting up the hill. Hurry, 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 puffed Gordon. Don't make such a fuss, don't make such a fuss, grumbled his coaches. They rumbled over the viaduct and roared through the next station. A long, straight stretch of line lay ahead. In the distance was a bridge. It had high parapets each side. It seemed to Gordon that there was something on the bridge. His driver thought so too. Whoa, Gordon, he said, and shut off steam. Pooh, said Gordon. It's only a cow. Shoo, shoo, he hissed, moving slowly onto the bridge. But the cow wouldn't shoo. She had lost her calf and felt lonely. Moo, she said sadly, walking towards him. Gordon stopped. His driver, Farman, and some passengers tried to send her away. But she wouldn't go. So they gave it up. Presently, Henry arrived with a train from the other direction. What's this? he said grandly. A cow. I'll soon settle her. Be off! Be off! he hissed. But the cow turned and mooed at him. Henry backed away. I don't want to hurt her, he said. Drivers, farmen and passengers again tried to move the cow, but failed. Henry's guard went back and put detonators on the line to protect his train. At the nearest station he told them about the cow. Oh, that must be Bluebell, said a porter thoughtfully. Her calf is here, ready to go to market. We'll take it along. So they unloaded the calf and took it to the bridge. Moo, moo, wailed the calf. Moo, moo, bellowed Bluebell. She nuzzled her calf happily, and the porter led them away. The two trains started. Not a word, keep it dark, whispered Gordon and Henry as they passed. But the story soon spread. Well, 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 chuckled Edward. Two big engines, afraid of one cow. Afraid? Rubbish, said Gordon huffily. We didn't want the poor thing to hurt herself by running against us. We stopped so as not to excite her. You see what I mean, uh, my dear Edward? Yes, Gordon, said Edward gravely. Gordon felt somehow that Edward saw only too well.